Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. In chapter 18, we take on some uh, languages that are really a challenge for the approaches that we have been pursuing throughout the rest of this textbook. These are languages that don't have strict word order, languages with extremely rich morphology and less sophisticated syntax, and we want to figure out whether or not these languages are um, compatible with the kind of approaches we've been pursuing. This is especially important uh, given our claim that uh, syntax might be subject to universal grammar. So uh, we want to look at languages that um, are not consistent with the theory we've been pursuing and see if they are in fact counterexamples to the claim that what we're doing is part of universal grammar. There are four particular kinds of phenomena that we're going to talk about uh, in this chapter. The first is called polysynthesis. Polysynthesis is about languages where sentences are not expressed as complexes of words, but rather as complex, complexes of morphemes, often um, where the morphemes are uh, interleaved with each other and they're just not, not just stacked on each other. Uh, and sentences are expressed as single words rather than... Um, rather than as complexes of words. Um, these words are incredibly complex and appear to have structure of their own, but they are, um, they are not uh, the kind of structure we might expect to emerge from something like X-bar theory. The second kind of language we're going to look at are uh, languages with phenomena similar to polysynthesis, uh, but where certain arguments of the sentence appear to be right in the middle of the verb. So you've got tense and aspect morphemes and on one part of the verb and you've got you've also got a representation of the direct object inside that morphology. These languages are said to involve a, a phenomenon known as incorporation where you incorporate the object into the verb. The third set of languages we're going to look at are ones which, where uh, the morphology may not be necessarily as rich, but the word order is, um, is much freer. So you can put the words in any particular order you want, um, or in uh, a narrow range of orders. Um, this phenomenon is known by the term scrambling. So if you like, you, you have the base structure, and then you can scramble the order of words. Um, typically speaking, scrambling happens um, on the basis of whether or not the arguments that you're sort of moving around are old or new information. Um, so there is a discourse component to the word order that isn't present in languages like English. And then the fourth kind of language we're going to talk about are what are called non-configurational languages. Um, these are languages where, which seem to show um, phenomena similar to scrambling in that um, you have fairly free word order, and, uh, but they take it to one step further where um, constituency seems to be disrupted. So you can have uh, non-contiguous uh, constituents. So you can have items uh, like a noun phrase where part of the noun phrase is at the beginning of the sentence and the other part of the noun phrase is at the other end. So you have um, a lack of obvious constituency and you have fairly free word order. And we're going to ask the question now, um, if these four types of languages are consistent with universal grammar and consistent with the, the theoretical approaches we have pursued, and we want to also explain um, how these uh, systems work uh, within uh, an approach that uses something like X-bar theory and movement rules. 